Father, we thank you for your blood that was shed for us on Calvary. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you went all the way for us, Lord. Father, we just give you all the honor, the glory, the worship, the praises this morning, Lord Jesus. We thank you, oh God, because your grave is empty. You are alive. You are risen, Lord. And you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we just want to give you all the worship, all the honor, all the glory, Lord Jesus. Father, we know that, God, that you are here in our midst. You are in the midst of each and every believer that is gathered. Not only in TNT, but throughout the world, you are in the midst to bless Lord Jesus. Father, we just pray this morning in the Holy Spirit. Have your divine way. Let your will be done. We give you the honor. We give you the glory, the praises. And as we sing, Lord Jesus, Father, that God, as we pray, that God, and as we praise, Lord Jesus, we know that God, that the heavens are open. That God, the blessings come down on your people. Lord Jesus, Father, we pray those that are on their way, bring them safely, Lord, whatever has happened, Lord, Father, throughout the week, that God, whatever kind of experiences, we put it aside because we have come into the presence of the Almighty God, because it's not about us, it's all about you, Lord Jesus. Father, we praise you for the work that you are doing in this place, in our lives, Lord Jesus, even for the viewers. Father, you reach out to them, touch them this morning, Lord, and have your divine way. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Surely every Sunday is a reminder, it's a joy, it's a celebration that Jesus, He is alive. He is the resurrected King, and He is coming back again for you and for me. Hallelujah. Risen. Forever glorified.
Jesus um, spoke to me and, and brought me out of everything. It's so amazing. I was thinking about it so many years ago. I never thought that I would have been here. I would have been alive to even think about it. But God is so amazing. And he has a plan Amen. for your life. He has a plan. So, bless his name for just holding on to me and keeping that plan alive. That today that, that everyone can see what God is doing in my life. And even I, each day God is working through me and using me. And I just want to thank God for the great work that he has sat in me and for what that he has in store for me. So you all don't give up. God has a plan for your life. And each of us, it will reveal and I am sure that you all are experiencing great things that God is doing in your life. Yeah. And just like me, you can share it with others. Share it with, with people who don't know Jesus. So I just want to thank God again for what he's doing in my life. I'm not even only in my life, but through my family. Yeah. Yeah.
says this in the Bible, it's John 3, 16. And if you know it, stay with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have an everlasting life.
We are excited that you are here and for all those that are viewing them on Facebook, bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. May have your seats. We are shouting out happy birthdays uh, to all those that are celebrating their birthdays uh, this week are uh, gone, past week gone, and this week that is ahead. And South Road, God bless you, Sister Luana's uh, daughter, celebrating her birthday. Any birthdays this morning in the house? You are celebrating a birthday uh, this coming week. Can I see your hand? What about uh, wedding anniversary? Anybody celebrating a wedding anniversary? Uh, this coming week, this past week on. All right, God bless you. God bless you. We want to welcome today. There is a hand going up there. Is it? Of course, it can't be anniversary. You're too young for that. Birthday. When is your birthday? Yesterday was your birthday. God bless you. God bless you. What's your name again? Onella. All right, Onella. Praise the name of the Lord. Happy birthday to you. God bless you. Trust that you have had a great, great day. Uh, we welcome all the newcomers among us. Bless the Lord. I know we have a bunch of them uh, coming from the elderly home in South Road, and we are so glad that they have made it this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, we want to really say we appreciate uh, the, the, uh, the president, the owner, amen, of the elderly uh, home, uh, Priscilla Tiloxi for taking the initiative this morning and bringing some of them on for worship. Praise God. So let's put our hands together for them. We also have Priscilla as well. God bless you. Sitting, sitting with them. And so we have uh, uh, begun uh, visitations with the home, uh, praying with them, and our attention is to continue uh, to do so. Uh, so I just want to ask you to just remember these beautiful dear people in your prayer. And make sure today that you get a chance to uh, meet with them and to talk with them a little bit. But uh, we are thankful that they made it this morning. Amen. Amen. And they are sitting right here on my right side here. God bless you again. Praise the Lord. Are there any other new persons uh, besides this group coming from South here today? Any other new persons? All right. Oh, praise the Lord. Next door, Rodney, could you stand up and introduce yourself to us? My name is Nicholas. Nicholas, where are you from, sir? Londonville. Londonville. Praise the Lord. So you are a friend of Rodney's? Yeah. So we are glad. Family. Huh? Family. Family. God bless you. God. Did I see the remembrance of this? I thought so. But Nicholas, it's a joy having you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. This evening we're back here in the house of the Lord, 6.13, uh, for the second service of today. Uh, we want to encourage you to come out and to bring a friend as well. Then Wednesday we are back here for Bible study and prayer meeting. And uh, we have been interceding before the Lord and you can see the results of, of what God is doing. Amen. Uh, many people have been drawn to the Lord. We have had many professions of faith. We've had so many baptisms recently. We have some day converts for us this morning as well. And so the Lord is just working mightily in bringing people to himself. So let's continue to pray on folks. Uh, let's do not slack our hands. It's a spiritual warfare that we are engaged in uh, for the souls of men and of women. And this is why God has risen up Power and Science Ministries. Uh, to share the love of God and to see people come to know him. So that heaven would be their home. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, I mean, uh, we've had a wonderful time of men and women's fellowship um, last week. And it was it was exciting. And so I've been hearing about um, uh, something special that will be happening. In fact, a couple events. So Anna's going to tell us about it. Okay. A pleasant good morning to each and everyone. So this is going to be a great one for... Um, you know, men or women and our young people. Um, this weekend coming, our men, they have a cookout. This will be hosted by Brother BJ. So you can see him, you can see Suraj, you can see our pastor for details. That is this weekend, it's Friday. 
the following weekend, both the men and the, both the young people and the women are carded for a tour. This is at the Caroline Bird Sanctuary. So seats are being filled up pretty quickly. So our young people are looking at Friday evening and our women are looking at Saturday evening. So we look forward for a good time and a good time of fellowship. So if you're not part of it, get involved. You know, fellowship is important. And we just continue to look forward to what God has in store for us. Thank you. Praise God. That's the theme of our men's men and women fellowship, uh, the Greek word koinonia. And, and that's what it means, all right? Uh, fellowship. And so the men is when again, just to make sure. This weekend, what day? Friday at 6 p.m. Okay, so want to make that clear. So men, we have so many here today. And uh, so there's a wonderful time of fellowship planned for us at Beach Eyes Hall next to Brother Shono. So that's just a less than quarter mile down the road. Not the home. Oh, okay. All right. So you see, we're going to make that clear. All right. So I thought it was by his home, behind his house or something like that. That would have been super as well. So we're going to the garden. His garden to have a cookout in Savi Road. Wow, wonderful, wonderful. We want to invite our friends over too. And hey man, we have some men that should go. I know you're going to thoroughly enjoy that. A cookout right there, close to your area. God bless you. That's six o'clock. Six o'clock this Friday. Wow, so that is super, super exciting. A cookout man. I know we have some gardeners, Kamal and whatnot. Praise the Lord. So you will feel just at home, my brother, in that garden. Amen. Well, you could give my brother a few tips and pointers also about gardening because you are very experienced. In fact, I think that you are the most experienced person here in our church family about gardening, all right? If anybody's looking for some eye about gardening, that's the man to see, brother Kamal. And also Sister Joanne because she is a gardener. He's the gardener, she's the gardener. Hand in hand, they're working together. They plant acres and acres of crops every year tomatoes and I was blessed with uh, some lovely tomatoes recently. They also plant uh, melanjan. Here we know it as um, well the states as eggplant for our viewers in the United States right now. Eggplant, melanjan, bygan is the same thing. All right, it's the same plant. All right, and also pepper. So God bless you so very much. We are excited. So all men, six, uh, six o'clock this Friday, South Road for Men's Fellowship. Uh, we are going to go right into the communion service. Uh, and so we invite the helpers to come as we are getting ready now to serve uh, the Lord's table. We do this uh, often at uh, our church here. And for the new ones who were just uh, baptized, uh, I know this is going to be your first communion, the 10 that were baptized, uh, the 7 rather that were baptized recently, we have 10 previously, and so it's going to be the first time that you'll be partaking of the Lord's table. So, uh, we celebrate with you today on this special, special event. This table is also open to all that have trusted in Christ and have followed Him in baptism. You are welcome. Whether you are a first time worshiper with us today, as long as you have trusted the Lord be baptized, feel free and partake of the table of uh, the Lord. There are before us, there are just two emblems one is the bread, and the other is uh, the juice. The bread represents the body of our Lord that was broken for us, and the juice represents the blood that was shed for us on the cross of Calvary. Before our brethren go out and serve, let's all bow in prayer and giving you a chance also. Just talk to the Lord as um, you examine yourself. How has it been this past month with your walk? If there's anything that you want to talk to the Lord about it, why don't you talk to him right now? Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we thank you, dear Lord, that you have saved us. And you have forgiven our sins. You have washed us in that blood. Your body was broken. And we are just grateful saints. We are thankful saints. Sir, that today we are reminded. And every time we come, Lord, to this table, we are reminded of the great sacrifice that was made. The payment that was made for us. We owe you a debt that we could never, never repay. And therefore, we pray that all the blessings will follow as we all join together in the Lord's table. 
Amen. Amen. Praise God. Our brethren are going out, and uh, if you do have a hymn now, I'd uh, like you to turn to number 87, the lady of uh, the Father. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul.
I trusted in the Lord for salvation. You have been baptized, all right? Praise the Lord. If not, I'll be looking forward for the day that you make a decision for the Lord. And also you fall into the waters of baptism. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Ask for our Julie to just lead us in a prayer of thanksgiving. Have been able to partake of the Lord's table today and to pray for our country as well. And I know you want to pray for Guyana too. Amen. Yeah. So he dashed towards them. 
but they were able to get away and they ran to the back of the store. So, as they ran to the back of the store, they found some sacks, some empty bags. And so they decided that the best thing to do is to hide in these bags. So the police officer went in there and he began checking and he saw these, these uh, bags and so he decided to examine them. So he kicks the first bag and the redhead says, meow, meow. <laughs> So the officer determined that it was only a cat in the bag, so he moved on to the next bag. So then he kicks the second bag and the burnet says, woof, woof. So the officer determined that it must be a dog in the bag. So he moved on to the last bag. So he kicks the third bag and the blonde shouts, potato, potato. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> let's all start. Are you ready to get ready to give this morning's collection? God bless you. God bless you. I want to, um, I want to welcome uh, Sister Sita to come and to give thanks um, for the offering that is about to be collected. Praise God. I'm seeing Uncle Subdue, so I'm taking a chance that Sister Sita is there. All right. Um, I am just feeling moved this morning. The church is, is growing. We are growing beyond the walls here and, and I feel that I, I will probably start by taking down the windows here for next week. Praise the Lord and just opening up that so we could see more and then we will proceed little by little. Praise the Lord. So talk to me about it but that's what I'm feeling this morning. Open up the windows so they wouldn't feel those on that side. They wouldn't feel that they're not part of the service. Uh, all right. So we can do that. We'll see how the air condition will work in that particular situation. But I guess it's time for us to start opening up and getting some more space. Amen, somebody? Amen. God is good. Sister Sita, would you pray for us? Oh, 
people singing, heaven is singing with us. Uh, okay, Sunday schoolers, uh, you can now head out uh, to your classes upstairs for yet another wonderful time of Bible stories and great fun, great fellowship. God bless you, God bless you. If you finish uh, before us, you can come back again uh, to the auditorium and join with us. I very often I see the kids uh, coming in the prayer line uh, for prayers. Uh, we're turning in our Bibles at this time to a passage of scripture found in the New Testament. In fact, it's just one verse of scripture. Luke chapter 1 and verses 37. So I invite you to read with me the word of the Lord. Luke chapter 1 and verses 37. Well, it's up on the screen. If you don't have a Bible and you want to read from the screen, that is fine. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. We are looking at and have been looking at for several weeks now on this subject, the God of the impossible. Bow with me and pray. Father, thank you for the word. Thank you for the anointing, dear Father, for speaking, Lord, to hands in the auditorium, dear Lord, in the fellowship hall, all those that are viewing live right now in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, man. Have your seats. Praise God. The God of the impossible. That's the God that we serve this, mo this morning. There's a story about a boy and he's sitting on a park bench with one hand resting on an open Bible. So he was loudly exclaiming his praises to the Lord as he was reading the Bible and he said, Hallelujah! Hallelujah, God is great. And yell without worrying whether anyone was hearing him or not. Shortly after, along came a man who had recently completed studies at a local university. And this man was feeling himself very enlightened and educated in the ways of truth and very eager to share his knowledge. And so he asked the boy, little boy, why are you shouting hallelujah? God is great. What is the source of your joy? What is the reason of your joy? Well, the boy said, well, I tell you, mister, here I was just reading in my Bible how God parted the Red Sea and the whole nation, the whole nation of Israel went right through the middle of that sea as God parted the sea. Well, the enlightened and educated man from the university laughed and he sat down next to the boy and began to try to open up his eyes to the so-called miracles of the Bible. And so that can all be easily explained, he said to the little boy, because modern scholarship has shown that the Red Sea in that area that the children of Israel crossed was only 10 inches of water deeper at that time. So it was no problem for the Israelites to just wade across 10 inches of water. Well, the little boy was stumped, and his eyes wandered from the man back to the Bible that was laying open on his lap. And so the man was contented that he had enlightened a naive little boy to the finer points of scientific insight. And so he turned to go. Scarcely he had taken two steps. The boy began to rejoice again. And this time to praise the Lord even louder. And so the man turned to ask, What is the reason, little boy, of your resumed jubilation and your, and your resumed excitement? Wow! The little boy exclaimed, God is greater than I thought. Not only he led the whole nation of Israel through the Red Sea, but he topped it off by drowning the entire Egyptian army in 10 inches of water. <laughs> Hallelujah. Folks, you can't beat my God. He is the God of the impossible. Amen. Praise God. There's nothing to have for him to do. Genesis 18 and verses 14. Even Sarai, when she was way up in age, past the age of childbearing, she was 90 years of age. 
the Lord came and spoke these words to Abram and said, you are going to have a son. Sarai heard that in her tent and she laughed at such an old woman as I am. I have been, I have passed the age of childbearing decades ago. Shall I indeed become pregnant and have a son? And my husband is an old man as well. He is 99 years of age. And the Lord said, is there anything too hard for me? Praise God. Around this time next year, you are going to embrace a son. Surely as the Lord had spoken, folks, uh, Sarai became pregnant, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And when Abraham was 100 years old, now he embraced uh, a son. Glory to God. Because, folks, uh, the God of the Bible is the God of the impossible. And if you are here today and you are facing a difficult situation, if you are facing an impossible situation today, folks, uh, if you have reached a place that there is no hope, um, you think that your back is against the wall, there is nowhere to go, nowhere to turn to. I am presenting to you today a God, the folks, uh, that can make the impossible possible in your life, uh, in your situation, in your family, in your home, uh, in your body, in your finances today, praise God. Uh, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Give him praise of us. Hallelujah. That's the God. And he invites you this morning. Put your faith and trust in him. You have trusted in others and they have failed. It is time to trust in the Lord. Glory to God. Put your faith and trust in Him. And folks, you will see what God can do. This faith that I am talking about is not head knowledge. Because a lot of people have knowledge. They're pretty educated even about the Bible and about the Holy Scriptures. They have memorized a lot of them. But God is saying beyond scripture memorizations, beyond a knowledge of the Bible, folks, what God is saying, listen, engage not your head in this matter, but engage your heart also, praise God, hallelujah. God wants us to believe, folks, more than what our head is saying and knowledge is saying. God said, believe me with your whole heart. If you believe me with your heart, praise God, you will see what I can do. Speaking about that, there's a story about a woman that came to the pastor and said, Pastor, I have a piece of land to sell. And if you pray with me, and the Lord were to send a buyer, I promise that I'm going to give generously. Amen. I'll give generously to, the, to your ministry. In fact, I pledge that if you pray for me, and the Lord send a buyer, I will give $10,000 to the ministry. Well, said the pastor, that is wonderful, and so let us pray. Let us pray. And ask God that God indeed will send a buyer. And that buyer will pay the full price of the land as well. The price that is asked. Well, a few months passed. And the pastor did not see the lady coming to church. And so one day he happened to see her while he was downtown. And he said, oh my sister, wow, I have been missing you. I haven't seen you quite a while in church, but I am so glad that the Lord allow us to cross paths today, all right? But uh, may I ask you about that prayer that we prayed about the land? And I want to know if God did answer that prayer because I believe that God would have answered that prayer. And so sister, can you tell me, is that piece of land sold? And she said, yes, pastor, I got the land sold. Now she remember any promise. Mm -hmm. And then 
She didn't want to talk about it, but the pastor felt urged to ask about the promise that she made. But sister, don't you remember that when you came to me, you said, let us pray about this land, and if the land is sold, all right, um, that you are going to give um, a donation to the ministry. And we prayed, uh, and so God has answered uh, our prayer. So sister, I am asking, what about the promise of the $10,000? She said, Pastor, to tell you the truth, at that time I asked you to pray, I had the mind, but I did not have the money. But now I have the money, I don't have the mind. <laughs> Amen. That's one of my father's jokes. Amen. Praise God. But I thought it would be very fitting, folks, about the big difference about it. Just with the mind and the heart, praise God. If you want to receive from God, folks, it must move beyond a head knowledge. And it might touch your heart, praise God. The Bible says, with the heart, man believe it unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, praise God. Folks, true faith... Always follow through whatever the challenges might come in your life. Regardless to the difficulties, regardless to the hindrances, and regardless to the obstacles, true faith will persevere. True faith does not run. True faith does not hide. True faith does not give up. True faith, folks, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Praise God. True faith does not throw in the towel and says, uh, this is it, um, this is it, um, I, I surrender, I lay down my arms. No, true faith continues to persevere. It does not matter, folks, um, how hard and how difficult it might be and might seem to you today. If you are a man of faith um, and if you are a woman of faith, uh, persevere and God will see you through. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 11, 6, He that cometh to God must believe that he is. He is who God is. Hallelujah. God is a mighty deliverer. God, uh, hallelujah, is uh, our provider. He is our protector. He's our savior. God is. Uh, he's a covenant-keeping God. Uh, so if he that comes to God must believe that who God is. Uh, and just remember who God is. Uh, he answers prayers. Uh, he said, Acts and it shall be given. In Matthew 7, 7, Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. That's my God. And God says, if you're coming to me, I just want you to come one way. Do not worry about too much about how you dress. That is not important about your external. What is important is about your internal, praise God. It doesn't matter too much whether you have on makeup or you have on jewelry. I am not too concerned about that. I am concerned about the makeup of your heart. Not the makeup of your face, folks, but the makeup of your heart. I am not too concerned about your outward attire. I'm concerned about your inward attire, praise God. And if you come to me with a heart of faith, if you come to me with a heart that is cleansed, praise God, then I will hear your prayer. Hallelujah. If you come to me with a heart of surrender, praise the Lord, you are going to find that there is a God of the impossible. You will find there is a God that will meet your need and meet beyond that, praise God, because I am the God who created the entire universe. And your might, your powerful Lord. Give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. True faith goes all the way. It is not about uh, two steps forward and then uh, two steps backward. Faith goes all the way. It is not about going 25% of the way. It's not about going 50% of the way. It is going 100%. God wants us to be 100% for Him. Not a 50% folks. God is not inviting you to a 50% proposition today. No. He that comes to me must deny himself. And must take up his cross. And follow me. Praise God. What God is asking us today is total surrender. Praise God. To surrender to Him. 
Abraham, a man that is surrendered to God, is a man that will experience the God of the impossible. That man will experience the power of God and the anointing of the Lord. Hallelujah. That is true faith, folks. It focuses on the goal. True faith focuses on the finish line. It overcomes the distractions. It does not stop because you are being criticized, folks. It does not stop because the neighbor is giving you a hard time. It does not stop because your family is giving you a hard time. No, true faith will persevere. Even though you are being criticized, folks, even though there is little or no support that can be given to you, you will continue to follow on and persevere because you are a man and you are a woman of faith. Praise God. God, folks, true faith knows that the God of the impossible will make a way. The Bible tells us he will make a way even in the wilderness, even in the time of scarcity, even in the time of famine, even when money is hard and people are losing their jobs, even in a time of a pandemic, even in a time of COVID. God will says, God says, folks, hallelujah, that he will make a way in it and he will make a way through it. The psalmist says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither is seen begging prayer. I'm here to tell you, brother and sister, if you are man and woman of faith and you exercise your faith in God and you trust in the Lord, God will make a way through the wilderness. He will make a way through the sea, praise God. Hallelujah. Because, folks, uh, this is who God is. Amen. True faith uh, presses on in the face of discouragement. True faith pressing on uh, in the face of pains. Um, in the midst of heartaches, it continues to press on. Um, in a time of limited resources, uh, it continues to trust uh, and to press on, knowing that God will supply my every need. Glory to God. That's what was happening in our story that we have been looking at for several weeks now. In 2 Kings chapter 7, 3 and 4, about the lepers uh, that stood outside of the gate um, when the famine folks uh, was ravishing some Miriam. And all the people could have seen was death uh, and destruction. Women were eating boiling and eating their own babies. Uh, the famine was so severe. The enemy was outside. They had besieged the Syrians. They had besieged the city. They could not go outside. So no food was coming in. And so the little supplies that had remained in the city now was being depleted so quickly. The Bible says a donkey's head was being sold for lots of money to her. Things were bad in that city. But there were four lepers. They stood outside of the gate. And notice what they said in, in 2 Kings chapter 7 verses 3 and 4. Why wait here till we starve to death? Why wait here till we die? If we sit down and we do nothing, we are going to die. Come on, let us do something. Come on, let us initiate our faith. Let us put our faith to action. But we just can't sit here and put up our hands in despair and say all oh, is done. No, they said, let us do something. Folks, I tell you, they initiated that day. Praise God. They initiated a certain action that God honored, which God will honor for you today as well. Praise God. They took the first step. Folks, and as they took the first step, I tell you, God took the second step. All that God is asking you to do, folks, is to take that first step and says, Lord, I will trust in you. Lord, I will surrender to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I put myself into your hands. Glory to God. And folks, God will take it from there. Praise God. They trusted in the Lord uh, that God, uh, folks, uh, will make a way. And folks, uh, they exercised their faith. Uh, and what happened? The enemy was scattered. As they put uh, their faith into action and they headed to the camp of the Assyrians. Uh, little did they realize, folks, uh, that they weren't going alone, that God was going with them. Praise God. Little did they realize that the God of the impossible was going ahead of them. That he was clearing the way for them. Praise God. 
He was making a way in a hopeless situation. Praise God. God was already providing for them before they even knew it. Praise God. God was setting tables in motion for them. Glory to God. And as they caught up, the Bible says in the twilight, and they made their way toward the camp of the Assyrians. The Lord made the Assyrians to hear the sound of a mighty army pelting towards them. And they were scared to death. And the Bible tells us the Syrians uh, just left their tents uh, and left their wealth, uh, left their food and uh, left their garments. Uh, and they ran for their lives. Uh, everywhere they could have gone, they went, folks. Uh, the Bible says, folks, uh, the Bible says, uh, and when the enemies uh, rise up against you, they come at you. One way, they will have to run. They will have to flee. They will have to scatter. Seven days, praise God. In other words, the, the Lord will mash them up, praise God. Hallelujah. Mash them up in a way that they would not be able to recover back. That's when the Lord is fighting for you, my friend. That is when the Lord is fighting your battle. That is when the Lord is making a way for you. Don't worry about your enemies tonight. Folks, you live for Jesus. You be faithful and you will see that your enemy would be scattered. Praise God. Every tongue that has come against you, everyone that has judged you, folks, God will declare your innocence. God is your judge. Amen. God is your exceedingly great reward. Do not look for your reward, folks, by man. Do not even look for it down here. Our true reward is in heaven. Praise God. Thieves can't get it. Robbers can't get it. Bandits can't get it. Praise God. It is reserved for us. It is kept by the hands of God himself. Give the Lord praise today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Folks, uh, that's what uh, took place when the lepers acted. The Syrians uh, scattered. Hallelujah. You have to understand uh, that who is with you today, praise God. A lot of times you look at those that are against us uh, and we feel discouraged. Uh, we say, Pastor, too much is against me today. You realize how much is against me today. Pastor, my finances is against me today. I'm struggling financially. Pastor, there's so much against me. My whole family has turned against me. My children have turned against me. My loved ones have turned against me, Pastor. Pastor, you realize that how much is against me today. In the job, they have turned against me, Pastor. It is so difficult to be Pastor, on top of that, my own health has turned against me. I'm not feeling good, Pastor. I'm struggling here, health-wise. Pastor, there's so much against me. I'm not catching a break in life. But folks, you have been looking too much at what is against you and who is against you. Why don't you start changing your perspective? Why don't you start changing your view? Why don't you start changing the channel, praise God? Why don't you start changing your provider, your network provider? You have the wrong network provider, folks. You don't have the right network provider today. You have the wrong network provider. Because if you have the right provider, praise God, you will see who is for you more than those that are against you. You will see, folks, that God is for you, praise the Lord. Somebody says, one man with God, amen, is greater, folks, than a man who have ten thousands of others. One man with God, folks, cannot be defeated. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you are with God and for God, you can be defeated by your circumstances. You can be defeated by your problems. You can be defeated by your ailments. You can be defeated by your sicknesses and by your infirmity, folks. You can be defeated because why? Because you have God that is on your side. Romans 8, 31 says, If God be for us, friend, then who can be against us? So it's time that you change the channel. You have been looking, folks, at the wrong program for too long. That's why you are messed up. That's why you are discouraged. That's why you are without hope. Change the channel this morning. Amen. Tune it on to the God of the impossible. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Change your provider. Let God be your provider. Jehovah China is my provider. Philippians 4 verses 19. Come on. Bless the Lord in this house.
Lord, somebody. Thank you, Lord. You have to understand who is your protector. You have to understand who is your defender. Do not look for man to defend you. Man, what man does, disappoint you. But God will defend you. When they are running out, God will come running in. That's my God today. The Bible says, do not put your confidence in man. Do not put your confidence in the arm of flesh. But put your confidence, put your trust in the living God. He will not disappoint you. And he will defend you. He will vindicate you. Sister, you don't have to fight that battle on your own. It's too much. Let God do it for you today. Praise God. Do not, do not look to be vindicated by man. I will tell you something. Man, folks, is full of disappointment. People go to the courts to be, to be vindicated. And I want to tell you something, folks. If the other side could pay more, you are in trouble. If the other side could hire a lawyer that has more expertise and experience, even though you are innocent, you are dead duck. You listen to me, somebody? You are a dead duck. They say who have more corn, they have more power. Mm -hmm. But all right, but let me tell you something. I, you might have more corn here, folks, but I have God. Amen. Praise God. He is my vindicator. Praise the Lord. I cannot be defeated. I cannot. It doesn't matter what man do. It doesn't matter what man say. They cannot defeat the God that is in me. Praise God. The Bible says, do not fear man who could only destroy this body. That's all that man can do. But the Bible says, fear God who can destroy both soul and body in everlasting fire. Praise God. Hallelujah. I put my trust in the Lord. And folks, I tell you, glory to God. I put my stakes in with the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He is my defender. Glory to God. God has a plan for you. And as I said last week, in the, the book of uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, His plans are to prosper you. Amen. His plans, folks, are to give you a good future, a bright future. Glory to God. God's plans cannot be hindered by what is presently happening in my situation today. What is happening in my finances today. What is happening in my family today. What is happening in my job today. What is happening in my body today. What is happening in my country today. What is happening in this world today. God's plan cannot be hindered by those things. Praise God. God's plan cannot be hindered by my headaches, my heartaches. It cannot be hindered by the struggles that I have, by the infirmities that I have, by the addictions that I have. It cannot be hindered even though there is a divorce in your life. It cannot be hindered by that, folks. My God will supersede all of that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. He will make the wrongs right in your life. He will take up the broken pieces of your life, folks. And he will put them back together again. And you will not even see a trace of a crack that was there. Praise God. He will make it all brand new. This is what God says. If a man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Praise God. A new creation of it to God. Not a patch of work. Amen, somebody. God is not a straightener and a painter, folks. Glory to God. What God does, folks, He doesn't straighten and paint up, up and still inside of us. Uh, I tell you, it still has those underlying issues. God make us all brand new. That's the God that I'm talking about today, folks. Uh, the God of the impossible. Amen. God knew long ago, before you and I were even born. Folks, He knew our life story. And He knew what will happen in our lives. He knew of your heartaches long ago. He knew of your disappointments long ago. He knew of your accidents long ago. He knew of your limitations long ago. God knew all of those things. But folks, I want to say, it couldn't stop the love of God for you. Amen. God knew that I would have been born in a home that would worship idols, but it didn't stop the love of God for me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Despite folks that I was born in such a home, yet God's love extended to me. Amen. And I believe that that love was there before I was born. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And God sent a little signal. I don't believe in superstition. I believe in the word of the Lord. 
But to tell me when this boy was being born, amen, in Barataria, glory to God, amen, the bells of that church was ringing when I was born. I think some angel was ringing that bell and says, mm -hmm, yes, sir, this is my chosen. This is my anointed, amen. I've ordained this boy, glory to God. I've ordained this child, glory to God, that he will be a prophet to the nations, amen. That he will testify of my word, amen. He will speak my word, glory to God. And folks, and will not be afraid of the faces of men. He will speak the unadulterated word of the Lord. He will preach the gospel, the true gospel, the which a man can truly be saved. This is, I have selected him. I have chosen him. And nothing is going to stop my plan. Even though he was born in a home that worshiped idols, it will not stop God's plan for my life. Praise God. When I accepted Christ at the age of 10 years, the devil says, I'm going to take you out. Folks, you, you looking at me here. Folks, I want to tell you something. Amen. That I have been through many battles. I have many battle scars even on my body today. Many battle scars that testify that the devil didn't like this boy at all. The devil folks sought to take me out. Just as when Jesus was born, the devil sent Herod after him. Come on, to take out because the devil knew that that was the savior of the world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Like when Moses was born, Pharaoh was after him, somebody. Get all them baby boys and throw them in the river. But God was their defender. Praise God. God was the defender of baby Jesus and baby Moses. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says, touch not the Lord's anointed and do his prophets no harm. Glory to God. The worst thing that you can do is to mess with a child of God. The worst thing that you can do is to mess with God's anointed. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Remember when Saul was persecuting the church on the road to Damascus, somebody. And he was about to go and to bring some more prisoners. The Christians imprisoned them, drag them, folks, and bring them to a false judgment. And he also authorized the execution of the Christians as well. There was a light that shone bright in Acts 9. You read it, brighter than the noonday sun. And a voice came from the light and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And the voice said, listen, I am Jesus, sir, whom you are persecuted. Right there he fell on the ground and became a blind man. Glory to God. He understood, uh, folks, uh, that it's not an easy thing to persecute the church uh, and to persecute the Christian uh, and to come against a child of God. Uh, he understood uh, but God uh, had a different purpose for his life. Uh, God will show him, folks, uh, that the same God that he hated uh, and the same one he was persecuting, uh, he would be willing to die for that same Jesus. Praise God. When God changes a man, he changes a man. When God changes a woman, he changes a woman. Praise God. Folks, do not let your circumstances right now keep you back from what God can do in your life and God what wants to do in your life. Regardless of what is happening in your life, God can change it if you put it into his hands. If you put yourself into his hands, he will change it, praise God. He will change you in the name of Jesus. Folks, he has a plan, amen, to bring you into glory and no devil can change that. Bible says, I give unto you eternal life, and you shall never perish. John 10 29. And no man shall be able to pluck you out of my hands. I stand on that word every single day. When the devil comes to me and says, You can make it to heaven. Look, you are a hypocrite. You can make it to heaven. You can make it to heaven. Look what failures that you have had in your life. Look how much time that you have fallen. You think you can make it to heaven? I tell the devil, You are a liar. God said to me, He gave me to the life. The day I repented and trusted in Christ. Glory to God. He gave me to the life. And He placed me into the Father's hands. Into the hands. Of, folks, there is no hand that is big as the hands of God. There's no hand that is powerful as the hands of God. There's no hand that is secure like the hand of God. If you're looking for a place to put your life and trust, trust in the hands of God. Give him praise, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 59, verse 1 says, And the Lord's hand is not short that he cannot save. Neither is the envy that he cannot save. Praise God. This is my God. Hallelujah. The Bible 
Bible says in Isaiah 14, look at the Lord, how big and great he is. Do you think that you can make a place to situate my God? Do you think that you can build a house to put my God in, that he can live in that house? Far to think even you can put God on the shelf, or you can put God in a little box, or you can carry him on some vehicle somewhere. Not my God. The Bible says the earth is his footstool. Amen. This earth, the Bible is using hyperbole language to tell you folks, amen, how big my God is. The nations are dust in the scales. So big is my God. His presence filled in the entire universe. Who made it? It is my Jesus made it. Praise God. All things are made by him and for him. And all things consist of Colossians chapter 1 by him. Praise God. That is my Jesus, the God of the impossible. Folks, in closing today, I got to close in closing today. I encourage you to put your faith in someone that cannot fail. You have been disappointed in your life too long. You have placed your faith in men and they have disappointed you badly. They have abused you. They have neglected you. They have mistreated you. They have abandoned you. But not my Jesus. Hebrews 13, 5, 6 says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That's my Jesus, praise God. And if you put your faith and trust in him today, you will experience the God of the impossible in your life. Turning the tables, it begins this morning. It begins right now. Go with me and pray. Hallelujah. You're here and you say, Pastor, here is my hand. I want the Jesus. I want the God of the impossible. I want a God who will never fail me. And that's Jesus. He will never fail. I want a God who can save me. I want a God that can bring me in the kingdom of heaven. And that's Jesus. I want this Jesus. And I want this Jesus right now. I can't wait for tomorrow. I want Jesus right now. You are saying that, and I know you are saying that. Glory to God. I want you to indicate right now by lifting your hand. If you're saying, I want Jesus. I want the Lord. You lift your hand right now. Praise God. Just lift it high. Don't be afraid. You're lifting not the pastor, but you're lifting it to God. Hallelujah. He says, I want the I want the Lord. I want Jesus. I want the God of the impossible. Hallelujah. This is my choice and my decision here today. Here is my hand. Pastor, praise the Lord. Would you lift your hand right now? You lift your hand in Jesus' name. For those who are lifting their hands up, I'm going to pray with you right now. Praise God. And also for those of you who are viewing right now the program, and you have lifted your hand as well. I invite you to say this prayer as you trust and you put your faith in the God of the impossible. Pray right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the God of the impossible. The God of the impossible was in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the God of the impossible. He makes a way where there is no way. He died on that cross so that what was impossible, that man could never get to God, he'd have been a lost soul. Jesus made that way. Amen. And I choose Christ this morning. And I ask for forgiveness, Father, for my sin. I invite Jesus to be my eternal, everlasting God. And from today onward, I will serve you now as a child of God. And I will live for you in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a good hand. And those who have said that prayer, invite the Lord into their lives. Praise God. I want to invite you to please give us a call, all right? And let us know your decision. And we'll have somebody uh, talking with you. And we invite you to come and experience more of the God the impossible through our regular services here. Amen. So make it the next time that we have this evening. Come and worship with us. We're going to right now open up the prayer lines and we're going to pray for you. Anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Exercise your faith like a lepers. Why sit until I die? Why wait till I die? When God gives us hope. Why don't you come 
and says, Pastor, you pray for me. Whatever it is today, there is a God that can make a way for you. You don't have to live this way no longer. God will bring that change in your life. If you need to renew and rededicate your life, yours will come. Take my answer, Pastor. I'm just here because I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. Amen. Let's all stand. This is the music. Would you come? Praise the Lord as uh, we leave the lines open for you to come. And I will be praying for you this morning.
say thank you. Oh, great are you, God, this morning. A God who knows us, a God who sees us this morning, dear God. A forever God this morning. How great thou art this morning, God. God, we thank you for life and we thank you for strength. Because of you, Lord, you are awesome, God. You are a great God, Father, this morning. We worship you in spirit and in truth this morning, dear God. Father, we thank you, God, for the service this morning, dear Father. We thank you, God, for each and every one this morning. We thank you for our anointing in this place this morning, dear God. Father, we are in a blessed place this morning, dear Father. We give you praise and thanks, dear God. There is no other God more than you this morning, Father. Father, things fail this morning, but you never fail us this morning. You are great, God. Hallelujah, God. We worship. We are great, you, Lord, Father. We thank you, God, for your people that are here this morning, with God. We thank you for our love, our blessing has overflowed, dear God. We thank you for your house of worship this morning. We thank you, God, for everything that was said and done this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 